welcome back to our next session of Solar Punk 2077. Uh, coming to you live from Berlin. Today we have uh, the makers of Radio Cosmica Libre, uh, um, a radio, a DIY radio uh, started in Mexico, the F. So we have uh, Rosaura, aka Haki, uh, coming to us live from Michoacan, uh, Mexico, and Melissa, who you heard uh, before. If you were tuning in um, from the Cyber Girls, uh, welcome both of you. Hey everyone, thanks Julio for introducing us. And thanks to all the team there at RC3 Solar Punk 2077. <laughs> um, so, yeah, basically, uh, we're going to talk about what is Radio Cosmica Libre. Um, so, uh, we have uh, this project that we started back in uh, 2019, so a year ago, in Mexico City. Uh, Haki and I, we were discussing about possibilities of having a collective, and we came with the idea of starting a radio. And uh, yes, uh, hello. Oh, sorry. Uh, hello, um, I'm Haggy. Thanks for having us. Uh, as Melly was doing the introduction, we had this idea of uh, creating a feminist collective because we thought it was really important to have a, a safe space for women in, in the scene in in musical scene, uh, more than anything, uh, because I'm also a DJ and an electronic music producer. So we were talking about creating this space in, in Mexico, and we started talking with Melissa about uh, this idea of, of making interviews and asking some uh, women producers and DJs to share our uh, music with us. But I was thinking about doing it only like uh, pre-recorded audio. And then Melissa told me that she knew um, a couple of engineers in Mexico City that were developing this very interesting transmitter called Tiny Message, uh, Mensajito in Spanish. So uh, that blew my mind. And that was the start of this project, right, Meli? Yeah, exactly. And as Haki said, it was uh, this transmitter that works uh, with free hardware and open and is open source. So basically, as you can see here in our picture, we have a um, a Raspberry Pi, uh, and th uh, that's it. <laughs> I mean, what we need basically the hardware that we need is a Raspberry Pi, some coding from our friends and uh, a mixer, a microphone, and internet. And with that, we realized, uh, thanks to our friends that have this, uh, this project called Radio Nopal, that they build these transmitters, that we could also have our own radio and that we could have our own space to share whatever we wanted. And uh, so we decided that we were going to focus on the underground music scene and uh, from a feminist perspective, and also that we could like broadcast uh, anything we wanted about politics and arts and so on. Yeah, so it, it, it actually blew my mind when, when Melissa told me about this transmitter because as you, can, as you saw in the, last, in the last picture, in the previous picture, uh, we don't need a computer or or we don't need a, any other kind of hardware to transmit. So uh, you can plug directly to the tiny message, uh, a little sound card or a microphone, and that's it. So that was that was the, the idea. And uh, I want to talk to you about our first transmission. Um, we We realized that having this open source technology allowed us to transmit live from almost anywhere 
uh, as Melissa told uh, you, we only need internet and electricity to plug in. So our first transmission was from Guatemala, uh, from Lake Atitlan, a volcanic lake. Um, and it was really, really, really symbolic for us because I, I, I would like to talk to you about why we are called uh, Cosmica. Cosmica it means cosmic in, in English. So why, why to use this word? Um, when we were uh, talking about the scope of this project as a feminist safe space, we were inspired by a, a Guatemalan woman named Lorena Cabnal. She uh, is a communitarian feminist from Guatemala. So it was really, it was really important for us to, to, to go live from there. We had some friends at a festival there and they shared with us uh, internet and electricity. And so uh, that was it. Lorena Cabnal, it talks about, um, talks about something she calls healing as a cosmic politic path. So she talks about uh, how a woman's body is her territory and how we need to, to uh, heal it in, in a community. Even, even when, when Lorena Cabnal, it's uh, from a rural, from a rural background, we, we took this word and inspired on her to build something in, in, in our cities, in our, uh, where, where we are living currently in Mexico City and now here in Michoacán. But we took this inspiration from the community in Guatemala and brought us to our places. So it's really inspiring the, the work she's doing and how she talks about healing collect collectively, healing in a collectivity as a woman. And so the, the first transmission, as you can see in the picture, was about talking about the, uh, the electronic music scene since we were in a festival and how it's really important to talk about feminism in these spaces because they are not safe spaces for women. There's a lot of violence in these festivals and in the music scenes. Um, the way they treat DJ, women DJs and producers, like, like if you wouldn't know how to plug in or like if you don't know how to play a DJ set or a live act, like if you are a woman, you cannot know how to plug or how to build some, um, some music or some uh, hardware. So we really thought it was really important and we, we managed to, to do this, uh, this talk with several women uh, that were there in that festival, some friends. We had um, uh, Mexican friends, Italian friends, uh, another producer and DJ from California. So it was really important for us to, to link and also to, to exchange our opinions, especially in a festival where they, they tried to, to do a 50-50 lineup but it didn't happen. So we thought it was really important to start talking about these subjects in these spaces. Yeah, exactly. So uh, having the, the freedom that we have with the radio, we got to, to really just um, criticize from the inside of the monster. <laughs> the festival itself and what, what was happening in the festival. Um, and also under the words of Lorena Cabnal, we feel like we are a vital energy of transgression. And that is like one of the main things we want to do with our radio to just like be rebellious and create an alternative to everything that we hear on the mainstream. So um, we have a wide array of themes that we cover in our radio shows. Uh, we talk, of course, we talk about feminism. We talk, uh, we broadcast new music. 
underground music. We talk about cyber feminism. We have a program that uh, dedicated some of its shows to it, uh, that it's called Algorithmia, for example. Um, we talk about the environment and uh, Latin American women, about women rights, a lot about women rights lately, especially with all the uh, reproductive rights um, movement that is happening in Latin America. We talk about sexual dissidents, uh, sexual education, techno-feminism, so many things that we cover on our approximately 27 uh, shows. Plus we have a special uh, shows also, depending on the dates. Yeah, so um, it's really important for us uh, to have this range of, of themes, especially from the woman's perspective. Uh, urban women uh, are part of this collective. And the way we, uh, like, like Melissa told, we, ha we have all, uh, around 27 programs, but um, that are regular kind of, but that's something that we love about our radio that since we are really like free, we have this liberty to broadcast whenever we want, wherever we want and the content we want. We don't have any censorship. So that's really, really awesome because we have the liberty to talk about the topics we find really, really important. And we don't need to, to answer to, to any other uh, alignments, you know, we, we, we can do our, uh, our programs. And it, it was amazing how after the first, um, after the first transmission, we uh, came back to Mexico and we started linking with the collectives and the DJs and the producers that we met in this festival. So it was like really a cosmic alliance that I was talking to this, these producers and they were like, okay, we live in the same city. Why haven't we met there? Like we had to go all the way down to Guatemala to meet up, to meet and to link. So it was really beautiful how we, uh, we came back to Mexico and we started linking to other feminist collectives. Uh, and that is how we got to manage to have all this variety of programs because uh, it was uh, this kind of sort of uh, mouth, mouth to mouth. Um, uh, so people start like approaching us and asking us for some space. And or the only thing we ask is to have uh, a feminist perspective. Like we don't exclude guys, we don't exclude them, but we, we try to, to have this this content about uh, woman rights, especially, and to link with other women in the cultural scene and in the political scene. So we have this almost 27 programs. We also had some specials and something that we love to do is to have live transmissions. So we, we have done some live uh, streamings from several spots from several bars or clubs uh, uh, before uh, COVID. But something it was really surprising is that uh, when this uh, pandemic started, we all had to be in our houses um, isolated. So it was really an opportunity for the radio to, to, to boost because we were creating there a community. And I really, I really believe uh, Radio Cosmica Libre uh, kept us going. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of people have told Meli and, and, and me that, that it was thanks to the radio that they were um, feeling that they're not alone, especially the, the, the girls and the women that were producing their programs. They tell me that it, it was something that kept, kept them saying no they this this mission of doing podcasts or interviews so we we managed to 
in a year to have around 250 hours of streaming between interviews, programs, live transmissions. We used to gather in some places, in some bars. And since uh, I'm part of a, of a music collective with DJs and artists, it was awesome to see how they wanted to share their, their work on the radio. So we, we managed to do some streamings, uh, let's say from all night, 12 or more hours playing and playing and doing interviews and talking about our scene. So yeah, I, I think Radio Cosmica Libre, it's in a sort of way a lifesaver in this pandemic for us. Exactly. And that is why we have here this word placemaking, which is like the thing we were discussing today. Um, yeah, I mean, the radio is basically like a safe virtual space uh, where we can all find refuge in a way. And as Haki said, this uh, was like a lifesaver for many of us. And um, yeah, just like as it was, it was said in the, it says on the text that was given to us, like to be in place is to keep making maps, to look at oneself there again and again. So it's like, this is kind of what we're doing with the radio, right? We keep finding uh, alternatives and ways to talk about what we're feeling, what is happening uh, without censorship. And, um, we look, I mean, it's a way to locate ourselves through our interests without censorship and calling the community uh, that we identify with through internet uh, and our transmissions and the archive that we have also is a way of place making. Another, and here we have a, like a couple of examples of how do we, of some of the special editions of uh, broadcastings we had? Yes, these this specials were really, really meaningful because in, in the case of the one at the right, the yellow picture, uh, Cariño Espinosa was a cyclist, a musician, a singer, and she was killed in an awful, awful and really violent accident. She, uh, she was run over by a drunk driver. So it really, it really hurt us since our, um, a part of our collective that we are uh, building this radio, there are a lot of cyclists. So this really, really, really hurt us. And uh, we, we had this initiative of making a special about her. It was a whole day of transmission dedicated to her. So we made this um, call on our social media and we were friends. Um, and we ask them to share a message, uh, maybe a farewell or maybe uh, an anecdote about how uh, Cariño, uh, how they call her, how Cariño touched her lives. And actually, uh, to be completely honest, I didn't met her, but the way her death affected our collective, it made me feel like we needed to do this like an exorcism. Like, and also as a kind of a, a call out, a shout out, because it was a really horrible way to go. So we were really touched and it was a really, really, really emotive special because we were all like crying and we were all angry, but happy because she was really loved. And they share also their music with us. So it was a, a mixture between messages and music and that really, really made us feel like we were really creating a community with the radio and something that we needed to do to, to talk about her death, her murder, actually, because it was, it was really, really hard for us. And uh, the other one, it just happened this solstice, the 21 of December. Ricardo Mendoza, it's a really important figure in the Mexico City scene of underground music from a hood, from uh, a cult thing, Sonidero, in Mexico, that they are like parties uh, that 
the people from some hoods do it in the streets. So they lock down the streets, they put their sound system and they put all this music like cumbia and salsa. And it's it's a really, a, uh, it's a culture scene in Mexico. It's it's kind of underground, but it really means a lot for the pe for, for the people on the hoods because it's a, it's a way of keeping peace between them because there are hoods that are struggling with poverty, struggling with, with crime and this kind of events on the street and, and they have no drugs, they have no, no booze, they have nothing, they have music. And when they play their music, they are like MCs on the, on the mic and they are uh, sending messages about community, about greetings to their, to their legacy. So uh, Ricardo Mendoza, it was, uh, it was a important piece of this culture and he died and he always supported our collective as Radio Cosmica Libre and a lot of other collectives, uh, women collectives, feminist collectives, and he was really, really open. So he died just like last week and he didn't have the, we didn't have the, 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 the chance to say goodbye to him because of COVID, because we cannot gather, we cannot cry, we cannot bury him. We cannot do anything because since he just entered the hospital, we never saw him again. So his family was really, really, really upset. And, and it was the same initiative to, to give an homage, to, to give him a farewell. And it's kind of a ritual, a passage, a trance to, to have this opportunity of, of saying how he touched our lives saying how he was really important, not only for his family, but for a cultural scene in Mexico City. So it was really, really emotional. And we did uh, this, uh, we asked uh, to, for all the people to send them messages and music and a lot of music. And it was really emotive also. So this is what we also want to do to, to have this space, this space to link with the community and to to try to to help in this awful situation we are all in in this pandemic that we are all separated and this is how we've learned that radio is creating really a community and we are linking it and it was really really emotional all the messages that arrived not only about his life but as as thank for a. Uh, thanks to the radio for doing this so it was really meaningful for all of all of us so this is kind of the i feel one of the most important things we've done with the radio that started just like an initiative and i don't know it's it's really it's really strong what we are what we are building here and what we are giving back to all these people that have touched us so it was really really special so we are glad to have this opportunity of, of linking with a lot of people from a lot of scenes. And this is what Radio Cosmica Libre is, is up to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we've been making lots of connections with, especially women from Mexico, uh, from not just the city, but from other states also. And um, we are also linking up with, with people from La Perifer Las Periferias, trying to decentralize the radio and sort of trying to decentralize the internet in a way too. And uh, so, yeah, we expect to keep on doing this. And uh, well, yeah, I mean, the growth we've had in a year, it's been amazing and uh, reception from the community has been super positive and just we feel like it's something that it's all again very necessary that helps us to to build together and to rethink the ways we are using technology um just like and also like it gives us a lot of agency, like, well, we don't need a computer. 
we don't need a we only need internet and uh and a willingness of, of the people that are into the project so yeah keep if you want to learn more about our radio just tune in to our media listen to our archive we highly recommend you to visit the archive we have so many good shows and um uh right now uh well recently we had like a special of anniversary where we also talk about a little bit about the history of the radio and um and some of the core principles of the radio and some really good music if you if you thought that there was no music made by women in latin america well just listen to our archive and we can talk about it later hmm. Yeah, it's 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 been a a really interesting ride uh, starting this that actually started as a talk uh, with Melissa and I, like friends talking, you know, having some tea, some coffee, whatever, a beer, and like it wouldn't be awesome to have a radio and to see how we just managed to build this and to link with so many collectives. Something that I want to 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 talk to you about is that um, most of the of the women that have a, a program in the radio, actually, we haven't met them. It, it has been something really about trust. Uh, we have linked and we have some video calls like, yeah, let's talk about the content of your show. But uh, most of the programs is because these women have heard about us with other collectives so they approach us and they are like hey could I have a space on the radio I would like to talk about this I would like to talk about that so that's been like amazing uh, this this kind of trust like we haven't met us but in a way we do make, we do know each other it's it's been something really cosmic it's it's I, I cannot explain it really because uh this woman have talked to me about how we have showed them another way of working and another way of trust because we have no sense censorship and we are trusting in in the in the work they do and um actually we are really really happy for your invitation here because this is our second uh, transmission in English. We had uh, one before with uh, a link between California and UK about a collective of music and women in music scene, electronic music scene especially. And we've managed also to link with uh, a lot of countries in Latin America to do this. They call it Cadenazo Radiofónico. And it's a mm -hmm. whole day dedicated to news that are not making it to the mainstream news. We're talking about freedom to politic, uh, presos politicos, I don't know how to say that in English, to people that have been incarcerated because of their political uh, stand. We are talking about uh, this, uh, people uh, that have been, that are disappearing in a lot of countries and people that are fighting for the environment, for their rights. So we linked to this collective of free media in Latin America, and they do a streaming all day about news and about things we need to talk, and they are not being, uh, uh, they're not being talked about this in other media because of censorship. And we are a space, a safe space, where we can talk about all the things that you cannot normally hear on the radio or in the TV, so, it's 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 been really really interesting to link with with these uh, collectives in in Latin America, and we've done uh, a couple of transmissions. It's a whole all day of news, music, and transmission about uh, Latin American and and human rights in it. So yeah, we invite you to to follow us, message us, uh, check us out on Mixcloud. We we have a lot of shows about a lot of things. 
uh, music, feminism, uh, cyber feminism, yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of DJ sets, and yeah, what what we are building, I think it 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 has become a light a light on this on these times of uh, a really dark time. So yeah, that that's our that's our mission to keep on giving this safe space, especially for women in in Latin America and in in the world. We we want to to keep building a strong alliances with with people all over the world, especially women. So yes, please write us, uh, hear us. We are going to keep making noise from from Mexico, and we are we we want to keep moving. As Melissa told, uh, we are decentralizing the radio. We just don't want to stay in a, in in only one place. We want to keep on moving. So yeah. We invite you to to listen to us. Yeah, exactly. Um. Well, thank you, folks. Yeah. Thank you to thank you, uh, Haki, uh, Rosaura, and uh, Melissa uh, again for being here. I uh, yeah, I'm really thankful for your talk. I really appreciate it so much. I'm originally from Guatemala. So hearing about Lorena Cabral was super nice, and especially what you said, Melissa, about the radio being a tool of resistance, um, sort of a vital energy of transgression, you said. And yeah. it made me really think about uh, what Lorena says. We talked about it also a bit last time, but let's talk about it again, about this yeah. land, body, the body territory and the land territory and, and the voice that you bring through this uh, DIY radio as a tool for healing. Now you talked about this uh, uh, Cariño Espinosa and Ricardo Mendoza and this collective process of grief that you did in this sort of decentralized way, I would even say, like in a, a, a funeral or, or, a, or a way in which people can collectively heal really cosmically <laughs> through these radio waves that you create uh, in this technology that you bring to people. And, and yeah, so I'm really thankful for that, for, your, for the space that you've given us uh, to, you know, to, 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 you know, for everybody also who's listening and, just very practically, um, uh, following up on the last thing you said about decentralizing the radio, how how can uh, how can people start their own uh, radio cosmica where they are? Can they make a mensajito, uh, let's say here in Berlin, like for example, uh, Paolo is doing uh, extraterrestrials, or in, I don't know, we just had the friends from Ro uh, in internationalists who went to Rojava in Kurdistan. Like, how can they do that there? For example, I'm sure they have their own radio, but you know, like to to connect them somehow, right? Because uh, that's what yeah. this is for. <laughs> sure. Yeah, so I want to refer first to like the part of the healing that you were saying, because yeah, it's what Lorena Kapnal talks about, like how healing is super important in these times. And it's crazy, how can we heal through technology in a way? How can we use technology as a tool to heal? But I mean, it's not like the Raspberry Pi or the cell phone are going to heal us, but like what we do with it. So like, it's really uh, about the, the ways we use technology. And I love to quote my friend Murshina Layari because she talks so much about like how important it is to use technology in a critical way. And this is like a very tangible example of that, right? Like how we are using uh, the tools that we can get in in an electronic shop uh, to channel a very important or a very yeah like how how can we use them in a in a in a good way so yeah uh, that and um, also you were asking about how can anybody have uh, their own radio? Well, as far as I know, you need a Raspberry Pi and you need, you need some other gear and we can send you the list. Uh, but also you need to contact our friends because uh, they need to tell you how to program the thing. That is something that we are working on it be more open, like everybody should be able to program it themselves. So we're working on that part. 
but yeah, we can totally put put you in touch with our engineer friends and send you the list of things that you need to build your own device. And setting up at the server end, right? Somebody has to have set up the, the server for the stream. Yeah, exactly. I was actually wondering, like, where is our server? Or uh, um, what what I know about uh, about this is uh, as me as as Meli told told you, uh, we had a list that you can go on and, and buy. The people from Radio Nopal told us how to build it, how to plug it, how to connect it, but they have the code. Um, uh, the thing is, we would need to to develop or to crack the code. That it's something that we would we are interested in doing next year. We have, uh, thanks to Melissa, we have been linking with some people from Costa Rica that know about uh, hacking, uh, programming, and coding. So we want to to make it more open and more free. Uh, the server, uh, as, as I as I imagine, uh, it's it's in in a market in Mexico City called Mercado de la Merced. And oh, it's, yeah. uh, and it's hide, it's, it's, you cannot find it. We actually don't know exactly what, where we are. Uh, and we, we think that's cool and that's okay. We don't need to know where it is, but actually I've been talking to uh, friends of Melissa about creating or cloning uh, the code or opening the tiny message to see how we can, uh, how we can reproduce it more, but uh, we haven't done it yet. We want to, next year is one of our, our goals, but um, they told me that actually uh, we don't need the server from them. We could migrate it to another online server. So we are working on it. We have, we want to, to see how we can decentralize <laughs> even no, the, the tiny message like, uh, crack it and make it work with another server, with another code, with another, it's kind of risk. We, it's a risk because we could deprogram it and <laughs> then it would be a, a problem. But we are we are taking that risk um, maybe uh, in a couple of months because we are interested on centralizing it and clone it and take it to other places that uh, actually, it's, uh, uh, yeah. Do you also combine with the uh, broadcasting FM signal or is it just the, the stream? It's, it's just only internet stream. Uh, I've, uh, I, I have a, a really, really good friend of mine that works in a feminist radio in Mexico City and they are a community radio, but they are transmitting in FM but since they are a community radio, they have to answer to political interests. Like if there is a political campaign or something, they are forced to put that spot on the radio. So that's something that Radio Cosmica is not going to do, you know? It's against everything we believe. So, so yeah, we could, we could make some kind of mix, mixture with, with FM. But first, I would like to, to talk to these uh, hackers in Costa Rica to see how we can like crack it, clone it, and let's see if we can uh, experiment with FM because my the we were I was talking with uh, this friend, she's called Laura Reyes, AKA Polyester Cat, if she's listening, big love to her. Um, and she was talking that she she's the technician of this radio and she's telling me whatever, the only thing you need to do a FM stream like we do in Violeta Radio, it's the name of the radio. Um, we, um, she, she told me, I, oh, I, I do it from my house and I only need uh, the, the passwords of the server and I do it from my computer. So she's programming from her computer. So yes, we have plans of making experiments and seeing how, how we can like push technology and, and, and like break the boundaries that you would think that radio, no, like we are really interested in experimenting and trying to to get on FM and cloning the tiny message and yeah, we we, we want to we have, to we make have it uh, a kind of a lucky situation in, yeah. in Berlin because there's a coalition of 
15 different uh, free radio groups. And um, we, our own project is only streaming at the moment, but we would like to do a dual situation where we're sharing for, for people who don't you know, have access to the internet or, or for a more simple access at different times when you don't want to have your computer with you or something like this. So I think the combination could be really interesting, but, but the broadcast realm can be much more regulated than what you can do freely on the internet. So I know that can be complicated depending on where you are and how well it's, how much control is exerted over the, 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 the FM broadcast signals. Uh, but I, I used to do pirate radio with the indie media scene. And we used to be in touch with people from the Chiapas radio and Oaxaca as well, I believe. And this network grew from the indie media scene of all the radios. And uh, unfortunately, we kind of, this is sort of faded out a bit. And we, we've lost this, uh, the, the, the network that we used to have. And it's really inspiring to hear your story. And, and it's making me think to, to build these alliances again, to create some, some new networking again with the, the free radio scenes. And we'd love to restream some of your programming here for, for the Globalista Radio Kit stuff. We should, we should figure out some fun ways to, to collaborate on programming. Uh, I also, as, as DJ Putinsky, I like to share music all the time and collect from other people's libraries so we could do a, an exchange together. And one thing I wanted to ask you, because one of the way we, when we started Globalista Radio Kit, just last, uh, it's a new radio project since the Corona Times started last March, was, was one, the feeling, and, and you, you, you described this really well, that, that it becomes this channel when we're being, we're feeling really isolated and we need something like a, you know, a space to, to share together. And radio is a great medium for that, I find. Um, one of the things we were kind of concerned with, and we haven't evolved this very far, but I'm wondering, uh, we wanted to be some kind of like economic solidarity with people, their livelihoods within the music industry, or if they're a DJ that can't play in clubs anymore. And we haven't really, we haven't really spent a lot of time to do fundraising, but ideally we would like to create a, a, a livelihood portal for people who are doing music who don't have it right now because things are shut down. You know, I was just wondering to ask, and I'm sorry to make it this question long, but have you thought of a way to be, um, yeah, thinking about the livelihood of the music worlds and the media worlds when you're doing this DIY stuff? Do you, do you try to fundraise or do you um, go to spaces? One of the concepts we have is to go to cafes and and pubs that can't open, but somehow try to provide some some solidarity that they're, hey, these people need help with their business. Can you donate or come come support them if they're doing takeout only situations, which is happening in Berlin, this, this possibility of, yeah, I'm sure that's happening in the same way there. Um, yeah, so have you thought about this kind of, I hate to talk about money, but but it's, Sort of like when you're in a crisis, it's also a big important factor for people. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's um, definitely. Yeah, we've we've talked about it. Um, actually, what we're talking with this friend that streams from FM, I was she would really. Uh, it was a, a lot of help talking to her because she has a lot of ex experience, and that's how uh, I knew that we are not going to be a community radio because of this political issues I was talking about. But yeah, actually, for our anniversary, we made a fundraising. We made a, I don't know how to say it in English, rifa, like you buy a ticket a and then you, a ruffle, yeah. So we managed uh, to gather some money because we are really, um, we're really streaming with basic, basic, basic uh, equipment, with basic gear. Our, our audio is not the best we can <laughs> achieve. It has some issues, technical issues. and. The response of the community was awesome. Uh, so yeah, uh, we, we have been thinking about uh, next year uh, trying to, I've talked to other friends to have um, some front fundraising from some uh, associations or some or something like that. Uh, but we need to, this, this year we, um, 
really, we're really dedicated to have uh, this project, a, a lot of uh, more solid project, so we could uh, show what, what we are able to do. So yeah, it's one of the, 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 the themes we are uh, working on next year. We do need funds, but we also talk about like how we can do this. Like you said, some cafes, some bars that we that, that are shut down. Um, actually, we've received a lot of support from a bar and a restaurant in Mexico City that it's a space for LGBT plus community. So, and sexual dissidents. So it's been really meaningful because they have shared their space. So we have made a lot of call out to the people like we are transmitting live from this bar and like to make um, kind of publicity between us on the radio for the community to know that, uh, that this space is it's supporting us and how we can support that place. And yeah, it's something we've talked with Melissa and other people on the collective. So yeah, we're, we're putting together this kind of uh, carpeta, this kind of folder with uh, description of the project and everything to, to, uh, to go and, and, and try to win uh, kind of a, uh, some, how do you say, uh, beca or something like yeah, but it's not scholar. Like, like a grant, <laughs> something like yeah, that. Yeah, like a grant or uh, some of economic support from from uh, a lot of uh, instances in Mexico. Actually, there are a lot of government governmental um, support, economic support. But we are we are we have to be really really picky because we don't have we don't want to. Uh, yeah, to we don't want to lie to whatever we need to. Yeah, we need to keep like, free, to keep our liberty, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's like a big uh, dilemma, no? Like, are we going to lose our freedom of speech if we get money from a certain sponsor? So, yeah, it's a very delicate subject. Yeah, it's a different thing if you have to set up an organization that's taking in money, but that's why, like, we're not doing that with Global Easter Radio mm -hmm. Kit, but maybe, like, at least we can channel the information for people to say hey go go put money towards this cafe before they go out of business or yeah. um, point people to band camp for example to hey buy these, these this music from this band because they've been working on this album and they can't go touring um so solidarity with the musicians yeah. and djs i don't know we're trying to think of different ways you can also create your own money uh, <laughs> <laughs> Julio, you're the expert on that. How can we uh, incorporate some alternative currencies into the radio? Indeed. Yeah, yeah. but this will be the talk at 9.30, but yes. Mm -hmm. Just like you have Libre Radio, you can also have Libre Money, you know, without the state and, uh, and the capitalism. Yeah. So. Yeah, and and in 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 between, we, we want to make a shout out and call out to all the people that are listening. Uh, in the meantime, that we can clone this tiny message and make it available for more people without having them to buy them or to pay for a server, that it's one of the main ideas of, of Radio Cosmica Libre. Uh, we want to invite you to, to contact us. We are totally open to retransmitting, transmitting, creating original content. Uh, we've been editing, we've been, there are some shows that uh, the, the producers, the women that are doing the, the, the shows, they send me their audios on Telegram, actually. So they plug their mic on the, their headphones on the, on the cell phone and they record their, their show and they then send it to me. Like, yeah, this is a part one, part two, because they don't know how to edit audio. I do know. So I say, if you give me the content, I will edit it for sure that I have no problem with that. I'm happy to do it because they have really important things to say about uh, the topics that are, that are vital for a radio and community. So, for example, this, this program called Alquimia Heretica, that it's about uh, um, feminist constellations and music, science, um, and woman in science. Uh, she doesn't know how to produce uh, uh, audio or to edit, but she sent me that their audios like that, like, this is the first one, and here's the track. The first one track and there here's the other audio and here's the track and i can see like the conversation in my cell phone 
and then I download it, edit it, and we are, we, we are open to, to, to improvise. And we invite you all, if you want a space in Radio Cosmica Libre, if you want to stream a set, an interview or something, we are here. That's a yeah. nice example to hear because we're trying with uh, GRK to think about how can we make the radio more interactive. So when you're saying that people can create content and send it into you, uh, we're we're looking at ways to like do things more in like real time. How can we do stuff like that? We use a just a very simple notepad, a chaos pad, for people to get into a chat room and to talk with us about the topics and and uh, be participating in real time as the show is going. Send us links, or if I reference something, and of course, uh, you know you can't you can't say everything that's in a, a deep essay article, but then you can say, hey. We, we just talked about this and we'll put we'll put the link of the article on the on the chaos pad it becomes a nice like uh, multi multi-platform kind of interaction and i don't know we're still looking for ideas how can we make the radio more real-time interactive we don't archive much of what we do we like to make it it's only in the live moment so that you get to participate with us while we're on but sometimes we we might decide to put some things up as an archive yeah, for us, the archive is super important because many of the things that we are saying are probably said for the first time live. <laughs> I mean, at least to an audience, you know, so for us, it's like archiving is really important. And um, that is why we we decide to do so. And uh, yeah, also, I don't know for, uh, if you want to like, if we want to reference uh, something we've said before in a show, or if I want to get to know more uh, about a show, I can just go online and hear it again. And I don't know, I think we, we believe that we are like, yeah, creating this, generating knowledge for everybody. So Absolutely. who knows? If that knowledge up there is good for someone else that it that needs to hear it in another moment or something, I'm sure it is. And uh, on that note, I want to rate it what Rosario said about anybody who wants to join and help out from our listeners. Uh, yeah, you know, I sent all the links out to the listeners so they can get in touch with you and contact you. So yeah, uh, super nice to have you and. Uh, I am sure we will see each other in other channels, in other forms, and in other, in other ways. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And stay tuned. Next up, we have my own phone, a uh, Chinese anarchist artist talking about the anarchist hospital. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks a lot for having us. Thanks so wow. much. Yeah, keep going. Pleasure. Sure. Yeah, thank you so much. Here to support you. Solidarity for the radio, free radio people. Yes. <laughs> free radio waves. Yay. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.